All right, UFC 287 is in the bag and Israel Adesanya has done it. Finally, he is one and three against Alex Pereira and the beef is over. I don't think it is. Honestly, I think we're going to need a rematch for this one. They're both one and one in MMA and I don't know why every single comment section seems to be saying that Pereira was dominating him in their first fight in the UFC. Pereira and Izzy had a very close first round in their first UFC fight, which Izzy stole the first round by the leg kicks. Pereira won the second round, Izzy won the third and the fourth, and Pereira was on his way to winning the fifth. That is not a domination. And their rematch, I gave the first round to Izzy. I think Pereira looked good in the second, and Pereira was very close to finishing Izzy until well done Izzy. He threw those Hail Mary strikes that landed right on the temple and put Pereira out cold. I don't think a beef of one and one in the UFC with a couple of close rounds and one and three overall means that the score is settled. Izzy never has to face Pereira again. I think they definitely should be doing a rematch. And I also think it gives time for that division to grow out. Drickus Duplessis and Robert Whittaker are both right there. I think you should make a pay-per-view event where it's the rematch, the third fight, have the trilogy go on and put Whittaker and Duplessis on that exact same card and let them know that that is for the number one shot, the title shot. I think that makes all the sense in the world. I was also very impressed with Adesanya for how locked in he was during the entire fight. His eyes were locked in, his motions were locked in, and even when he did get that knockout, to be able to switch into the showman that he is and start shooting arrows right at Pereira's corpse almost was awesome. I don't know how you can be that locked in during the fight. I will say it is pretty cringe though that the next thing that he thought of was I got beef to settle with a 10-year-old kid. And I only found out today that that kid did that when he was five years old. Izzy's 33, man. I just, if I just won a title fight, the UFC against like my number one nemesis, the first thing I think of wouldn't be, where is that 10-year-old boy? I've got to mess him up too. It's just very weird. It just adds to the cringe factor of Izzy at the moment. I think after UFC 287, you cannot deny that Izzy is an amazing fighter, but his cringe levels are through the roof. You know, Colby Covington and Henry Cejudo, they're known as the kings of cringe, but they have come out plenty of times and said that they're putting on an act. I don't think Izzy's putting on an act. I think he just talks like he's in an anime and believes that he's in an anime all the time. It's really weird. It, it doesn't break character at all. It's very strange. So I hope that when his career is done, he can actually like start talking to the media like a normal person and say that it was just an act to sell the fights because it's definitely working. His star power is there, but it's odd to watch. Overall, I think the fight was boring. I think the first round was standard leg kicks from range from both of them. And the second round was looking to be the same until that awesome exchange happened at the end. But I can't really complain about it too much because there was such a fantastic knockout. And really, at the end of a pay-per-view, that's what you want to see, a mind-blowing knockout like that. That sort of saved the card, really. Because when you look at the co-main event, Burns and Masvidal, I'm very happy that Burns won. I'm very happy that Masvidal retired. Masvidal looked like a man who should retire. He definitely looked like that Nick Diaz, Nate Diaz, Jorge Masvidal rig of a body. And the movements were slow. By the second round, Masvidal looked absolutely gassed. But he got to end his MMA career in his hometown, in front of his home fans. I don't think you could ask for a better showing than that. He didn't get knocked out, so that's great. I think the best thing that we can see from Masvidal now is after the success that he had at Game Bread 4, he should seriously consider going after Nate Diaz as a free agent as hard as he can. Those two should set up a BMF rematch in Game Bread 5. That would be an amazing boxing match that would sell so many pay-per-views. And because it's Masvidal's actual promotion, 
those two could make real bank and keep greedy Dana's hands off that sweet, sweet cash. As for Gilbert Burns, it was a good performance, but it wasn't really a show-stopping performance. Against someone who had major dad bod and looked like a drunk uncle swinging away at a fight, and that means that he doesn't really jump at you for that next title shot. I think it should be between him and Bilal again on the main card against Colby versus Leon. And again, let them both know that this is for a number one title shot and finally have these two sorted out. And I would even suggest that you make Bilal the backup fighter for that fight because he has definitely earned it more. Burns is great. I love Burns' personality. He's a very fun fighter to watch. But after he's lost to Chimaev, he's now only got two wins against guys that are not even in the top 10 of the rankings. I don't see how you could walk over Burns to get a title shot for that. I don't think he's earned it at all. So I think what we need is a title elimination fight. And you might as well do it on that card because it just helps sell that card so much more. As for the rest of the card, Rosas Jr., he's 18 years old. What do you expect? The only takeaway I have from that is that he has absolutely nothing when it comes to the striking, which is what you would expect from an 18-year-old jiu-jitsu nerd. And honestly, I don't really have a problem with it. The only problem I have is that he kept saying he was going to be the youngest champion in UFC history. And you would expect him to have some boxing skills to say that. But either way, I think honestly, it's good for his career. He didn't cop that much damage. It was really just a grindy sort of wrestling match on the ground. And he really is going to learn a lot from the experience. So I'm excited to see how he goes in his next fight to see if he's actually learned something from the experience. And... Lastly, for me, one of the happiest moments of the card, which unfortunately wasn't on the pay-per-view, it was on the prelims, finally getting himself back in the win column. That guy has been on such a poor losing streak, but it's almost like the fans don't blame him for it because he's been up against nothing but killers. So to see him actually get the win and then let out that huge scream in his post-fight press conference... I felt that, man. I was like, Jesus, I'm with you, dude. I'm with you. So overall, it was a very fun card. It definitely lived up to the hype, which is great. That's all you can ask for. And I honestly expected Pereira to win in the second round via knockout. So as he was laying into Izzy, and when Izzy threw that big Hail Mary and started following up with the hammer fists, my emotions were going like this. It was like a roller coaster. And that is exactly what I want from a UFC pay-per-view. So I got my tips wrong, but there's no complaints here on my end. It was a very enjoyable card. Guys, let me know what you think down in the comments. What should we do next for Izzy? Do you think it should be against Chimaev? Or do you think there is a real reason to have a third match against Tim and Alex? You know which way I think it should be going. And what about Gilbert Burns? Was that performance impressive enough for him to actually go after a title shot? To me, it wasn't enough. But hey, let me know what you think down in the comments. I love hearing from you guys. I'll see you in the next one.